Hey everybody, a little while ago, Apple came out with 10.4.3 for Logic Pro 10, and it wasn't a huge update, only really one new feature enhancement was added, and a bunch of stability and reliability bugs were fixed. So I just wanted to look through and talk about this one new feature, and then just showcase, in case you haven't seen this, all of these different things which have been fixed and I love these type of updates, primarily because when they come out, it means that they're not worried too much in this small update about adding a bunch of new things. Instead, we're just cleaning up a bunch of things which haven't been working correctly. Things which you may not even have recognized, but it's a decent sized list. The one thing which is new refers to the preferences right here under MIDI where you can set under inputs, you can deactivate MIDI input ports for MIDI hardware, and then they say which communicates with other software applications. This isn't really going to affect most people, but in some cases, in a case that I can think of right this second, at, our, at the university, one of our main studios has an SSL console, which has a control surface layer, and it is constantly sending MIDI to the computer and it gets interpreted as note data. And so without this, we actually have to do a workaround in order to stop that from doing that. But now we could just simply come in here, turn off that communication MIDI channel here, and we'll no longer get that interference. So it's a really cool way to do this. To explain a little bit about why this happens and why this is even necessary, let's take a look at the environment for just a minute. Inside our click and ports layer, you can see our overall connection signal flow here. Here's our physical inputs for MIDI. You have a little input note area here, an input view monitor, and then those go into the sequencer. So everything here is coming into the sequencer. Now, let's set up just for a moment an actual instrument here so you could hear this or we can just turn it down and you can see it, just the signal. Right? Okay, so back into our environment for a moment. This is coming off my primary controller right here. If I wanted to, I could actually delete that main thing pushing keys, nothing happens. I could do this from the HP1, still nothing. Ooh, let's not undo, let's not delete everything. Let's just delete that one. Or we could take this directly from my keyboard. So I can send just one physical input into my sequencer. But the thing about this is that it is a little bit more tricky and complicated to do this, even though it's possible. This is a little bit of an annoying way to have to set this up. So let's undo all of this real quick. There it is from the sum. So instead of having to do all of this rerouting, now we have the input part of our system preferences and we can simply just say, I don't want to accept anything from these ports, or we can turn them back on. So a really nice, handy way to be able to control this. Still, what I would prefer is in the actual channel properties itself to be able to come through and change the actual input for this over here. So instead of just being able to choose the MIDI channel, we could actually come through and say, I want to do port and then MIDI channel. And I can very clearly control that for each of my tracks. That would be ideal. Okay, so this has just been a look at this new feature in this version of Logic. I hope you found a little bit of insight into this. Hope you're having a great week, and I will see you all soon.